Qin's unification of China. Ying Sheng, first ruled over the land of Qin during the Warring States period. His rule was marked by major reforms. He sought to unify the other kingdoms in the region and spread his influence to all of China. The first emperor was the eldest son of the Qin Prince Yiren, who later became King Zhangshan of Qin. Prince Yiren at that time was residing at the court of Zhao, serving as a hostage to guarantee the armistice between the Qin and Zhao states. Prince Yiren had fallen in love at first sight with a concubine of Lu Bu Wei, a rich merchant from the state of Wei. Lu consented for her to be Yiren's wife, who then became known as Lady Zhao after the state of Zhao. Lady Zhao gave birth to Sheng on 18th of February 259 BC, and he was given the name Zhao Sheng. The clan name of Zhao came from his father's lineage and was unrelated to either his mother's name or the location of his birth. Lu Bui's machinations later helped Yiren become King Zhangshan of Qin in 250 BC. Over the course of the Warring States period, the Qin state had evolved to become the most powerful and most influential of the seven major states in China. In 238 BC, Ying Sheng came to the throne of Qin after eliminating his political rivals Lu Bui and Lao Ai, who had attempted to gain influence over Ying Sheng. Lao Ai was tied to five horse-drawn carriages and Sheng had the horses move away with haste. The technique caused Lao Ai's body to be torn into five sections and his torso splayed open. Lao's family was subsequently executed. When Ying Sheng came to power, with help from Li Si, Wei Lao and others, Ying Sheng formulated a plan for conquering the other six major states and unifying China. The plan, which focuses on annexing each state individually, is based on allying with distant states and attacking nearby ones, one of the 36 stratagems. Its key steps were, ally with Yan and Qi, hold down Wei and Chu, conquer Han and Zhao. Ying Sheng plans were an ambitious one, but also the most successful one. His military genius is studied by modern strategists even today. His rule was strong, he may have had tough reforms and ruled with an iron fist. But it worked. His power and influence helped unify all the warring states into one state called Qin, or modernly known as China. His first task in conquest consisted of raising a colossal fighting force of 600,000 men. In 230 BC Ying Sheng's army invaded the state of Han. Han was already weakened by constant warfare from Qin in the past. With Han absorbed into into the Qin Empire he reorganized the Han state to form the Qin's empire Ying Chuan commandery, and making Yangtze the capital of the commandery, which is now present day Yuzhou, in Zhuocheng central Henan. Ying Sheng was aware with Zhao's war with the state of Yan and he used the division to his advantage. He sent a sizable force to Zhao in a two-pronged attack. The Battle of Fei was a costly battle and Ying Sheng lost one-sixth of his total forces. However under Turti pressed on and attacked again at Fanwu. Even though Ying Sheng was defeated again, Zhao's forces even though won a Biric victory they suffered heavy losses and was forced to retreat to their capsule at Handan. With Zhao's forces consolidated at Handan, their downfall was only hastened by two natural disasters. An earthquake which devastated infrastructure and killed hundreds of thousands of people, and a famine that followed which worsened the death toll to catastrophic levels. Ying Sheng obviously took advantage of the situation and launched a pincer attack from the north and south on Hadan, Zhao's capital. Three Qin armies embarked from Shangdi which is now present-day northern Chuanzi, Jingshang in present-day Jingshang County, Shi Chajiang, Harbi, and Henan present-day Shenchang, Henan, respectively led by Wang Jian, Zheng Wei and Yang Juan He, to coordinate the attack on Handan. Li Mu and Sima Shang were put in command of the Zhao army. Li Mu ordered his troops to build defensive structures and avoid direct confrontation with the enemy. The Qin forces were unable to advance further and both sides reached a stalemate. The Qin state bribed Gu Kai, a Zhao minister, to sow discord between King Qian of Zhao and Li Mu. The king doubted Li Mu's loyalty and ordered Li to hand over his authority to his deputies, Zhao Dong and Yan Ju. When Li Mu refused to obey, the king became more suspicious of him and ordered his men to take Li by surprise and capture him. Li Mu was brutally executed in prison later on King Qian's order. In 228 BCE, after learning that Li Mu had been murdered, Ying Sheng's forces attacked, defeated the Zhao army and conquered Donyang east of Mount Taihung. 
Zhao Dong was killed in action while Yan Ju escaped after his defeat, but was killed later on. Seven months later, Ying Sheng's forces occupied Hagan thus bringing an end to Zhao's existence. In 228 BC after the fall of Zhao, Ying Sheng's army prepared to mount a strategic offensive the state of Yan. Zhu Wu, a Yan minister at the time, attempted to form an alliance with the other non-conquered states in an effort to stop the Qin army. However going against the advice of his minister, the prince of Yan, Den decided the best way to stop the Qin army is to cut off the head of the dragon so to speak. He formulated a plan to assassinate Ying Sheng, he sent his best assassin Jing Qi to kill Ying Sheng with a poisoned dagger. After infiltrating Ying Sheng's camp, Jing made his move and attempted to kill Ying Sheng, but Ying Sheng's royal physician saw the his lord in danger and aggressively threw his medical bag at Jing. Jing stumbled and it gave Ying Sheng enough time to get his distance and unsheath his sword and strike Jing in the thigh, immobilizing the assassin. Jing made one last ditch attempt as an act of defiance, threw his dagger at the king but it narrowly missed him and Ying Sheng took his sword and mercilessly stabbed Jing eight more times, then the king's royal guard stepped in and finished Jing off by repeated brutal stabs until Jing breathed his last. Gao John Li was a close friend of Jing, who wanted to avenge his death. As a famous lute player, one day he was summoned by King Sheng to play the instrument. Someone in the palace who had known him in the past exclaimed, This is Gao John Li ally of Yan and close friend of King. Distraught and torn on what to do next. King Sheng's advisors pleaded with him to kill the musician. But unable to bring himself to kill such a skilled musician, the king ordered his eyes be plucked out by hot iron picks so he couldn't see the king, but the king allowed Gao John Li to play in his presence. He praised the playing and even allowed Gao John Li to get closer. As part of the plot, the lute was fastened with a heavy piece of lead, considered a poisonous metal which injury would surely lead to a slow agonizing death. He raised the lute and attempted to strike at the king but he missed, and his assassination attempt failed. Gao John Li was later executed. Ying Sheng was devastated and angry at the same time that twice with a short time that people tried to kill him. Worse yet, he lamented in executing his musician for his music was soothing, but his lament only fueled his hatred for the state of Yan. Ying Sheng was furious. He thought the daring attempt by Yan to assassinate him was dishonorable at best. He gathered his men and launched a furious campaign of revenge against Yan. Using the assassination attempt as an excuse. The Qin army decisively defeated the Yan army including Yan's reinforcements from Dai in the Battle of the Yi River, after which they conquered Ji the capital of Yan, which is modern day Beijing today. King Zi and his son retreated their forces to the Lodong Valley. However Ying Sheng's forces caught up with King Zi and his son's forces near the Yan River, where the modern day Han River is today. Ying Sheng's army had slaughtered the Yan army and King Zi pleaded with Ying Sheng to spare his people if Zi would be allowed to execute his son. Ying Sheng agreed to the terms and Zi executed his son by decapitation and presented Ying Sheng the prince's head as a gift of peace, and the king of Qin agreed not to attack Yan. The two states were at peace for three years. While at peace, Ying Sheng focused his attention on the conquests of Wei and Chu. In 225 BC his 600,000 men force conquered 10 cities which situated on the northern border of Chu as a deterrent to Chu invasion. After which he then turned his forces to the city of Daling, which was naturally fortified by rivers, and canals. Ying Sheng's military advisor Wang Ben came up with the idea of diverting the water from the Yellow River to flood the city of Daling. Which would have been a shocking and magnificent engineering feat at the time. The diversion took three months while the main force still laid siege to Daling. When the water was diverted, a flood of water had drowned over 100,000 residents in Daling and left the city defenseless. Ying Sheng and Ben succeeded in their plan and King Ji surrendered way to him. In 224 BC Ying Sheng called for a meeting with his military council and devised a plan to invade Chu. With the massive force Ying Sheng had gathered in his campaign. The task would seem easy or a little too easy according to one of his advisors Li Xing. Li Xing proposed only utilizing 200,000 of his main invasion force to attack Chu. General Wang Jian who advised Ying Sheng, implored him that 200,000 men was not enough to take Chu and a debate between Jian and Xin continued until eventually Wang Jian retired to his quarters in disgust. 
The Chinamis scored initial victories as Li Xin's force conquered Pinna north of present-day Pinna County, while Mengwu captured Qinxiu. After conquering Yan as well, Li Xin led his army west to rendezvous with Mengwu at Chengfu. The Chu army, led by Shang Yan, had been avoiding using its main force to resist the Qin invaders while waiting for an opportunity to launch a counter-attack. During this time, Lord Qingping, a relative of Ying Sheng who descended from the Chu royal family, incited a rebellion in a city previously conquered by Li Xing. He also prepared for a surprise attack on Li Xin later. The Chu army led by Shang Yan secretly followed Li Xin at high speed for three days and three nights before launching a surprise attack. Lord Qingping's forces followed suit from behind and joined Shang Yan's army in attacking Li Xing. Most of Li Xin's forces were destroyed in the battle. Upon learning of Li Xin's defeat, Ying Sheng personally visited Wang Jian, who was in retirement, and apologized for not heeding Wang's advice earlier, and also invited Wang back to serve in the court. Per Wang Jian's request, Ying Sheng put him in command of 600,000 troops and assigned Meng Wu to be Wang's deputy. Wang Jian was aware that the king would doubt his loyalty because he wielded too much military power, so he frequently sent messengers back to the king, requesting for rewards for his family so as to reduce the king's suspicions. In 224 BC, Wang Jian's army passed through the south of Chen and made camp at Pinim. The Chu forces, led by Shang Yan, used their full strength to launch an offensive on the Qin camp but failed. Wang Jian ordered his troops to defend their positions firmly and avoid advancing further into Chu territory. After failing to lure Qin army to a trap, Shang Yan ordered a retreat and Wang Jian seized the opportunity to launch a surprise counter-attack. The Qin forces pursued the retreating Chu forces to Chinan, where Shang Yan was killed in action in the ensuing battle in 223 BC. Qin launched another attack on Chu and captured Shaoqin, the capital of Chu. Fa Chu, the king of Chu was captured and Chu was annexed by Qin. The following year, Wang Jian and Meng Wu led the Qin army to attack the Wu Yue region, which was inhabited by the Bei Yue, and captured the descendants of the royal family of Yue. The conquered Wu Yue territories became the Qin Empire's Kuoji commandery. Before invading the other states, Ying Sheng bribed Hao Shang, the Qi Chancellor, to dissuade King Jian from helping the other states while they were being attacked by Qin. By 221 BC, Qi was the only state in China that had yet to be conquered by Qin. Qi hurriedly mobilized its armies to its western borders as a safeguard against a possible Qin invasion, even though its military was not well equipped and morale was low. In the same year, Ying Sheng used Qi's rejection of a meeting with the Qin envoy as an excuse to attack Qi. The Qin army, led by Li Xin, avoided direct confrontation with enemy forces stationed on Qi's western borders, and advanced into Qi's heartland via a southern detour from Yan. The Qin forces met with little resistance as they passed through Kai territory and eventually arrived at Linzi, the capital of Che. King Jian was caught by surprise and, after being persuaded by Hao Shang, he surrendered to Qin without putting up a fight. The former territories of Qi were reorganized to form the Qin Empire's Qi and Lanya commanderies. In 221 BC, after the conquest of Qi, Ying Sheng proclaimed himself Qin Xiu Hong which literally meant the first emperor of Qin aka China, and established the Qin dynasty. The Qin Empire was divided into 36 prefectures, with Xinyang as its capital. Qin Xiu Hong created a centralized state and empire that would become the bedrock of future Chinese dynasties. During his reign, his generals greatly expanded the size of the Chinese state. Campaigns south of Chu permanently added the Yulans of Hunan and Gungdong to the Chinese cultural orbit. Campaigns in Central Asia conquered the Ordo's loop from the nomad Zongnu, although eventually it would also lead to their confederation under Mudu Chaniu. Qin Xiu Hong also worked with his minister Li Si to enact major economic and political reforms aimed at the standardization of the diverse practices of the earlier Chinese states. He is traditionally said to have banned and burned many books and executed scholars. His public works projects included the unification of diverse state walls into a single Great Wall of China and a massive new national road system, as well as the city-sized mausoleum guarded by the life-sized Terracotta army. His policies of reform however did not sit well with most of his people. He had his political enemies killed. His quest for the immortal elixir turned out to be his death knell. 
He believed the liquid silvery substance known as mercury would give him immortality and divine powers. Worse yet, mercury turned him insane. He was becoming increasingly paranoid, forgetful, and would run to a lake with a bow and arrow and proclaim himself ruler of the world. Into 11 BC a meteor fell into Don Jun near the Yellow River and a villager inscribed the words the first emperor will die and his land will be divided. The emperor Qin Xiu Hong heard this prophecy and sought the prophet who made the prophecy. When no one came forward to lay claim to the so-called prophecy, he grew mad and slew the entire community surrounding the palace. He then had the stone melted down and pulverized. In 210 BC he started to develop sickness and fever. His physicians tried to do the best they could to help their frail emperor, to no avail and he died in later that year. After the emperor's death, Prime Minister Li Si, who accompanied him, became extremely worried that the news of his death could trigger a general uprising in the empire. It would take two months for the entourage to reach the capital, and it would not be possible to stop the uprising. Li Si decided to hide the death of the emperor, and return to Xianyang. Most of the imperial entourage accompanying the emperor were left ignorant of the emperor's death, only a younger son, Ying Huai, who was traveling with his father, the eunuch Zhao Gao, Li Si, and five or six favorite eunuchs knew of the death. Li Si also ordered that two carts containing rotten fish be carried immediately before and after the wagon of the emperor. The idea behind this was to prevent people from noticing the foul smell emanating from the wagon of the emperor where his body was starting to decompose severely as it was summertime. They also pulled down the shade so no one could see his face, changed his clothes daily, brought food and when he had to have important conversations, they would act as if he wanted to send them a message. Eventually, after about two months, Li Si and the imperial court reached Xianyang, where the news of the death of the emperor was announced. Qin Xiu Hong did not like to talk about his own death and he had never written a will. After his death, the eldest son Fu Zhu would normally become the next emperor. Li Si and the chief eunuch Zhao Gao conspired to kill Fu Zhu because Fu Zhu's favorite general was Mentian, whom they disliked and feared. Mengtian's brother, a senior minister, had once punished Zhao Gao. They believed that if Fu Zhu was enthroned, they would lose their power. Li Si and Zhao Gao forged a letter from Qin Xiu Hong saying that both Fu Zhu and General Meng must commit suicide. The plan worked and the younger son Hu Hai became the second emperor, later known as Qin Erzu or second generation Qin. Qin Erzu, however, was not a strong and influential emperor like his father and rebellions quickly erupted. His reign was a time of extreme civil unrest, and everything built by the first emperor crumbled away within a short period. One of the immediate revolt attempts was the 209 BC Days village uprising led by Chen Shang and Wu Gang, Although the Qin dynasty lasted for 15 years only, its influence on Chinese history lasted for centuries to come and China itself would endure for at least 2,000 years. When Qin Xiu Hong died of mercury poisoning he was buried in an elaborate tomb he instituted at a young age, which contained numerous chambers and thousands of terracotta soldiers. The tomb took dozens of years to build and is still being excavated to this day. Stay tuned for more history documentaries and don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel Iron Tusk 341.